So for those that are on the move, and for those that are just seeking, well, here's a show for you. Welcome to another episode of Matt Chat Live. Hey guys, this is Matt, and welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. I am very excited to have a power couple here today uh, from the Lou Everett Group. Uh, Their names are Sherry and Lou Everett, and I'd love to introduce them to you here this morning. They have an incredible business. They've got a great thing they're doing with people around the world, and just want to give you guys a second to talk to folks about that and introduce yourselves a bit, and uh, let's let's start talking to folks about Lou Everett Group and, and what you're here to do. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Matt. It's been such a, a a great, great conversation that we had prior to this. And, and it was a great connection all because of LinkedIn and the power of connecting. So mm. I love the connected connect the dots. I think it's amazing. So thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So, so we share, are. The, share, share yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you guys. Yeah, so we are the Lou Everett Group. Uh, this is Sherry and Lou here. We are a married couple. A lot of people ask us that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are uh, corporate trainers uh, and specialize in leadership and personal development. So we're ex- uh, executive level. So we love working with teams, especially with organizations that are growing, that we focus on their communication and effective uh, productivity, really, mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. communication is such a big component in order to grow a business. How many times have we seen in corporate America or any business where the rock star player gets promoted and the organization says, congratulations, here's your team, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. And six months later, they get fired because they didn't meet their metrics. Mm -hmm. So it's not the employee's fault that they didn't know what to do. It is actually the organizations for not properly equipping them. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come in. You know, those soft skills, as we call them, power skills. Mm -hmm. So we love helping that space. We help anywhere from solo entrepreneurs to the corporate C-suite. We have a soft spot for solo entrepreneurs because you know, we've had multiple businesses uh, together as well as separate. We've been doing business together since 2005. Uh, so it's been a long and time. And we survived. <laughs> and we survived. I know, I can't wait to figure that out because you're married. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're yeah. still married, right? So that's really a big deal. We are. <laughs> we actually are still married. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and, that's, and that's exactly what we do. Uh, we, we uh, you know, on top of the, of the leadership coaching, uh, leadership training, corporate training, we, we, we also are coaches. Uh, we are certified coaches where we have, gosh, over four decades of experience in the leadership space. Um, and so our intent is to help grow people and grow their business, whether they actually have their own business or they're actually working for another company. And they're responsible uh, to, for a team or our department that has to grow. And we do that one on one or in a group setting. Uh, and so that, that is really where our passion is, is to help transform today's leaders uh, because we all need that transformation right yeah no doubt so that that kind of makes me think of a question so let's just say somebody is in that position in leadership and they need some of that stuff but they come to you and they have a certain goal or certain uh thing in front of, front of them their other business has a task it's a department they just like the rock star guy right yeah, he got the yeah. job and now he's like oh crap i have no idea what to do mm-hmm. which some of it would come down to that person if he's that rock star of a guy he probably should investigate a little bit find out if there's an sop find out if there's some written material and try to figure out what that might look like who's the last guy what did he do I mean, he got canned maybe i shouldn't do what he did right i mean well, right, <laughs> right? so do you do you uh, do you just launch right into that thing and say okay bob here's what you do or do you find out hey bob tell me a little bit about yourself Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good question because you see, there's a, um, we've been asked this several times and I even, we've even done a small video on it uh, last year. There's a big difference between a coach, a mentor and a counselor, right? And, and by telling people what to do is, is nowhere near as effective as, as the person themselves identifying what it is they need to do to move forward in the direction of what their empowered future really is. And the way we do that is by, like you're saying, Matt, is getting to know the person. We got to find out really what makes them tick, what's going on in the mind, you know, because when it comes down to power skills, it all starts with us. It all starts with, with what's going on up here, how you're thinking. Um, now, we're not talking about anything new agey here. We're not talking about hypnotism here. We're talking about true, yeah, true directive of, of 
let's have a let's have a partnership and an arrangement where I'm able to ask you the right questions so that you can then see some clarity so that the weeds can be pulled back. And in your situation with with uh, someone who's been promoted and all of a sudden now it's daunting, what do I do? While they should do their homework. I mean, you and I both know coming from that space that SOPs don't do much in the, in the realm of telling what truly it is that that role entails, right? And so sometimes <laughs> okay, said, sometimes there's a difference yeah. between an SOP and an SOB. And I said, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I know the difference. That is right. You know, we go down to say reports to, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> those types of things. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes we, we get in a situation and people get in a situation where it's a promotion. It's a, it's a new thing for them. And so they, they, it's a great opportunity, um, which unfortunately, not, it's fortunate and unfortunate that some companies will say they know that this person will take you because it's an opportunity for them and they're rock stars. Um, so that approach is going to be very simple with us. We call a pre-plan. We talk, find out what it is that you're being asked to accomplish because that's what's weighing on your mind right now, which is what's also clouding your mind and seeing really the clarity behind how to move that direction. And that pre-plan changes over time because it makes you feel good as a pre-plan. But at the same time, as we sit down, we then begin to understand one another. We begin to ask you questions on really what it is that drives you to, the, to that future piece. What is, your, what is your vision of where you really want to go? And how does that fit in with where you are now? And, and it doesn't really, does really mesh with who mm-hmm. you are as a person. And that's where we kind of begin. How do you handle some of the upfront roadblocks that may be easily identifiable to people that are on the outside looking in, right? Um, but when you're flying at 50,000 feet, somebody that's at ground level with that issue and you say, oh, this is the problem, fix this, they're going to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't do it, right? So uh, when you identify some of those things, I mean, this comes into coaching and, and counseling, actually, in those positions. Um, you know, what's that process I don't have to go full detail, but I mean, mm-hmm. how's that, how are you able to help somebody get, get through that process of, of act, actually identifying what some of those roadblocks might be, right? Those blocks that they have in front of them, but they may not necessarily see them, mm-hmm. right? But then they can say, oh, okay, so in order for me to be able to do this job that Fred just got fired from, <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, I'm supposed to do this, uh-huh. and I really, I really mm-hmm. don't know how to do that, but I didn't know I didn't know how to do that. So now what, right? So how does that, how does that kind of work to be able to even get to that point and then, and then process through it to even get to where the goals are impossible. That's right. Right. It's like a GPS, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. You pull up your phone or you mm-hmm. type in the GPS, you type in your destination um, and you have to make sure your starting point's accurate. Right. Uh, but we don't really necessarily, we don't really know what's, what's coming up. We don't know what the roads look like technically until we're, in the vehicle driving on that exact road that's showing up on our GPS. And there are times when we get to a certain point that we have the option to take a detour because of a road blockage. Well, that approach is the same way with coaching. The questions like, okay, I see. So um, what's, what's, what's kept you from doing that so far? What if you, what if you, what, what would you do if you didn't have this in your way? How would you approach it? Those questions then begin to pull back kind of the shade of, of stuckness. If we can the remove of stuckness. Hashtag yeah. shade of stuckness. That's good. But it's just so right. <laughs> so we can remove that, right? We can remove that state of stuckness and that shade. That 10 times best. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I have yeah. to bleep it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden you see things differently. Yeah. When you can see it from the perspective of, if this didn't exist, how would I approach it? So in other words, let's see the finish line first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And work our way back. Well, it's like those maze puzzles that you get in school, right? Yeah, Yeah. those maze puzzles, yeah. And then there's the start and there's the finish. And, you know, it took me forever to work on these darn things until right. someone told me going, hey, Sherry, start at the finish. And I then know, yes. I was I like, what? Out too. I was like, oh, man, I got this figured out now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the only reason we start at the start is because it says to. 
Right. At, that's so good. Yes. And we're stuck. Who, I mean, there's nothing that's going to slap our hand if we start at the finish line, right? And <laughs> in the same way, right? When it comes to our our future, mm-hmm. um, and, and that is that's where we got to start. We've got to be able to see that. So what we do, right. just start like what you person. do, is create that. Yeah. And we start with the person. So going mm-hmm. back to your scenario, we'll right we do. We go right back to the person and to and have that conversation and asking those right questions mm-hmm. to open up that that mindset and creativity. Well, where you know, let's let's get talking with that. Mm-hmm. See yeah, where yeah. they want to be. See themselves uh, ten years from now. I know a lot of people can't even know what they had for breakfast, let alone ten years in the future. Right. <laughs> but if you ask the right questions, it will come It'll out come just out. naturally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so same same business, mm-hmm. guys over here. Bob got promoted, but <laughs> Bob's not the client. Um, Sally, the CEO, is the client. Mm-hmm. And Sally, the CEO, has the business that's going on here, but then she just had to fire Fred. She just hired Bob, who's fantastically skilled. He's got lots of great as- you know, uh, things in his life that are fantastic assets to him, the business. She trusts mm-hmm. that he can do the job. Um, but there's some things going on there for her too, right, in this whole thing. So if you had come mm-hmm. in, I mean, that's one aspect where it's more one-on-one for a certain person for a certain thing. But what about a, a larger scale, right, when it comes down to a corporation, uh, or a business, small business, whatever. And your client is you walk in the door to ABC company and you're sitting down with the president or CEO of ABC and they kind of lay out some of those issues. And you know you've got to talk to people too because mm-hmm. there's issues that are that are clogged in other areas. I mean, that's, that's the 50,000 foot view, obviously. Mm-hmm. So how would, you, how would you address a scenario like that where it comes into – the corporate scenario is more than one person, but you still talking to one person, right? Right. What, yeah. Yeah, point when, out the blind spots. Point out the blind right? spots. But mm-hmm. yeah. and here and here's the thing about um, and you know this about the corp, about the C-suite and corporate level the mm. the uh, the weight that's on your shoulders at a level like that is heavy, and the one thing that's easy to forget about at the CEO C-suite level, even at the executive level is it's easy for, to forget about the impact of our influence. Mm-hmm. It tends to be crowded out with creation of, of policy, of procedure, of hiring and firing, recreating teams, making sure you got the right people in place and all the, all the systematic dynamics, which human, is necessary. The human part sometimes gets, yeah. gets lost. And that's where people centric can get lost. Mm-hmm. And that's a key part too. And so that's what it comes out to is that. I dare say that the human part, gets lost many times when it comes down to corporations. Yes. Yeah. You know, board it's, meetings are like, hey, hey, um, Lou, how, how have you been feeling this week? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, all right, Lou, what's your results from last week's thing? And what were the right. numbers at today, right? Well, I, yep. I, I had a problem last week where my car broke down and I lost my car and then my wife left me and I'm trying to get this all done. All right, but what's the results, Lou? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. That's a pretty b- rough example, but uh, really in the corporate world, it comes down to that, right? But Those are real examples. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks, but it's true. <laughs> it's, it's the truth, uh, yeah. and it's an unfortunate truth. And now, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. Matt. Mm-hmm. The numbers are extremely important, mm-hmm. and, and those things are very important for the growth of a business. And it's imperative for, uh, for the leaders of those teams and those departments to, be, to have that focus, right? But there is a, there is a line that we've got to balance ourselves on. And no matter how difficult or challenging that is, it doesn't matter because as an executive and as a leader of your team, no matter what level you took the role and that role includes leading people. That's where it starts. It's a responsibility. Yes. It's a response. <laughs> and, and you can't get results without influencing people in a way that's going to draw those results in. So leading them with influence in a way that they want to follow you, not they have to follow you. Mm-hmm. Yes. So good. So that's where that is the major focus. But to your point with the CEO, it's really going to be dependent on the challenges that that person's facing. And right away, we know off the top, the, the biggest focus is how do I get this person to do this? And how can I get this team to do that? And the answer is you can't. Would you, those teams have to do it. And the way you do that is by understanding, let's pull back here. Yes, you're the boss, but there's the three letter word that is by, by far the worst three letter word 
in any level of leadership and it's ego. We've got to pull back the ego to fully understand how can I influence them as a leader in a positive way to get the results I need because we all need people. So right away, we got to bring back that people centric vision. Not one leader is going to tell you will come in your face and say, Oh, I can do this without people. Yeah. They won't say that because they got people they rely upon. If they say that, they won't have the people, right? We all need them in order for that to happen. So, but sometimes inside we forget. But Lou, I'm a nice guy and I give people extra vacation. We have pizza Fridays here and <laughs> you know, I've, one of the employees, they had a problem and I bought a tire for them. I had my secretary write a check and we bought their tire. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with ego. I, I care about my people. I do things for them. I mean, so I don't understand why they're not doing something for me. I mean, they have a job. They should just be able to do the job. I mean, I've told them what to do. It's on paper, right? So um, I don't know if what you're telling me is, is going to work because I, I already feel like it's happening, but there's another problem. So what are you talking about, Lou? Okay, yeah. So, so the biggest question is this. How's it working for you so far? Can you leave my office right now, please? <laughs> See, and, 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 that, and that's what, you know, what you're, you know, and that situation is a perfect example yeah. because being generous is different than being a leader and leading with influence, right? Being generous is something we all need to do as leaders. That's one way. But sometimes that generosity does not have to come in that type of form. It, the generosity that needs to be provided to the people on your team is a solid leader that develops other leaders, that develops the people on your them. team and equips them, providing them, and then lets them lets them go and do it so they learn to fail and grow too. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem yeah. is where f leaders don't want their teams to fail. Well, that's a big problem. We don't want them to fail, but we know they're going to because that's how you grow and that's how you change and that's how you become better. And as a leader, we've got to allow room for that mm -hmm. in the growth process. And, and that, is, that is a difficult thing to think about because of the pressures that you get as leader too. It's that but, space that unfortunately yeah. we live through it literally and uh, on both sides of the fence here that um, organizations just don't allow that space of failure. Mm -hmm. And failure is such an ugly word but we know, because we're all preaching on the same choir here, but failure is actually not an ugly word. It is okay. Mm. So that's how people learn. Now, within reason, right? We're not saying like go sink the company down no. a hole yeah. <laughs> you know, or anything right. like that. Right. But when people are learning and as they're making little you know, decision after decision with mm. the guidance of that true leader, guiding them in the right direction of saying, well, what do you think? What are your thoughts? And then have that person like, well, here's my thought, and this is where I'm thinking, or it could go over here. Then together, they're like, okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just that space. But Lou saying, because of the hierarchy and leadership is positional in some of these organizations, they don't care. It's just do it, do it, do it, and beat them over the head. And it's unfortunate mm -hmm. and it's a playbook that needs to be destroyed, you know, that has been going on for decades. It needs to be lit on fire. It does. It needs <laughs> it's to be lit a on positional fire. <laughs> leadership playbook yeah. it, because it hurts people. It, does. it hurts people. It makes people sick. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can kill people. It's, there's evidence and proof of that type of environment. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's a matter of just remembering. Now, mm -hmm. I've, been at, I've been at the executive level and I'll tell you the stresses are there. Mm -hmm. you're getting the pressure to make sure your teams are succeeding and performing and your people are performing. And so you're getting, if, if you're leading up is another thing we can talk about another time, but you're getting this pressure down here saying you've, why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? The pressure to push and push and push. And mm -hmm. We have a choice though, as a leader of our team, just because we're getting that from up top does not mean we have to react the same way with our team. Mm -hmm. You want results then get results, but do it in a way that impacts and influences that team to want to follow you. Mm -hmm. That's how you get results. And yeah, there's a action, huge pitfall. Action versus reaction, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's a huge pitfall for new leaders that um, we talk about a lot is that they don't know any different. You don't mm -hmm. know what you don't know. And I right. think that's why So it's so important 
to have coaches and mentors within your life, especially if you're in a leadership role, to mm-hmm. be aware of that. Because of course you're going to mimic what your superiors are. They're like, okay, well, I guess that's just that's how it is. That that's moment. your example. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to turn that around. And yeah. uh, that's so a that, good point because yeah. you know, as leaders, we're examples too. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to step back and look at it that way, especially if you're a brand new leader. Mm-hmm. And um, because, you don't know. right. You just don't know. It's, it's a learning process. Mm-hmm. It's being a leader is learned. Something you have to be developed in. Yeah. You may have qualities you were born and may say, okay, your qualities are. Right. Are there like are qualities that we have in leadership in life. There's people that can say, man, you're, you're born to be a leader, but that doesn't mean that you know how to be a leader. That's right. it. Still got to learn it. We were, yeah. we were, we, we were born to walk. <laughs> But we had to learn it. That's right. No, we we have the ability we, we have the ability to ride a bike. But when you get on a bike, you didn't just get on a bike and ride a bike. You you, you fell and you, you feel and there was somebody there to teach you along the way. Everything that we've had to relearn and learn over the years, we've had to learn it and we've had to fail in the process to keep moving. We call it falling or failing forward. Right? Is right. is going in the right direction when you fail? But we need to be able to really pick up our people and equip them to be successful in their job as opposed to demanding them to be successful in their job. You know, it's, it's like handing, handing, I, I, like I say, it's like trying to feed pizza to a baby. <laughs> you can't do that. You've got to ease them into that type of food and in developing a real strong leader is the same way. You've got to develop them in a way that's going to really be long-term and not just short-term gain, which, you know, it's an instant world. And, and that's what we want. We want instant results. But the problem with that is those companies, their turnover and their attrition in their employees mm-hmm. is, is terrible because, because of that type of leadership. Yeah, no doubt. And it's tough when you're in a position like that for folks that are feeling like, well, but I need this right now, Lou. It's like so bad. But at the end of the day, it's going to take a period of time to get to where you really need it. So it's hard to allocate that time when you feel like it's such a crisis right now, right? And, um, you know, it's a place of trust, a place of um, submission, right? Not like horrible submission, but you know what I'm talking about. It's just a place where you're willing to submit to the process Mm -hmm. that even though you have a timeline in your mind, if you stick to that timeline, your business is probably going to be gone in three months. But if you spend three months to do this, you might go to a place you've never thought you could go to before. Exactly. And you, like, it's a very good point, Matt, because mm-hmm. that, that, that is a good example of where you all of a sudden you see, wait a minute, when you get the awareness of, you know, when you have that relationship with a coach uh, and it develops you and all of a sudden you say, wait, and you come to the realization, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. This pivot right now, could, that could change the fact that there's a fire. <laughs> but that awareness doesn't come about because you're so engulfed into the flame, you're so entrenched into the experience and you haven't pulled yourself out of the picture frame, as Sherry says, <laughs> to see it from that perspective. I've got a really good fun, a really good analogy. It's, a, it's kind of a comical story and it's real, um, but has a really good result. Uh, would you like me to share that with you? No, no, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't gonna anyway. I know, whatever. That was, that was a teaser. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I want to hear it for sure. <laughs> You're like, no. Nah. Nah, 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 not today. Not, not today, Lou. No. But it, it, it's a perfect example. I have a, uh, a, a client of, of ours. We call our clients partners. So if I say partners, that's what I'm, that's what I mean. It's kind of a habit of ours, but, um, I was on a session. We were on a session and he was telling me this story because it's something, it's something that we had talked about a question I had asked him just brought this awareness to him. And he goes, that reminds me of this situation that I was in last week that really helped me stand back and see something. And, and I don't think I would have been able to see it that way if it wasn't for you being uh, me being you as a, as a coach. And I said, okay, well tell me the story. He's not a big camper, but he's got a couple of buddies of his that are campers. They like going out and camping and we're talking tent sleeping bag camping, not, not like high end. <laughs> I'm sleeping in a camper with air conditioning thing. This is, this is, this is the real deal, but he really doesn't do that that often. But he says, I wanted to try new things and kind of take a break from my, my hustle and bustle. So he, the friend called him up and wanted him to go camping. He says, well, actually I've got a real busy day today. I can't go because they're going to leave in like 30 minutes. But then he thought about it. And while he was on a, a zoom call, 
all he could think about was going camping with his buddies because he hadn't done that before. So after that, he decided, no, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna move my appointments and I'm gonna go. So he calls his buddy and says, "Yeah, I'll be there." He gets in the car and he's driving. Now this is uh, we're in, we're in uh, southeast of Raleigh, outside of Raleigh, uh, and this is out at Hatteras Island. So they went down to Hatteras in a campground. So he's driving down and he says, "Wait a minute, I've got to stop somewhere and get gear. I don't have any gear." I'm uh, sleeping back in our tent. So here he is driving down. He stops about an hour away from the campground at a Walmart. Goes in there and he pull and he goes in and he the shelves in the camping area are just completely bare. Probably because it's close to the campground. I'm assuming, but but they had one sleeping bag. So he think he grabs a sleeping bag or he he, 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 he's gonna, he grabs a sleeping bag and he goes down. Actually, I, I'm sorry, I have to back that up. Mm. The Walmart that he had it was empty, and he called his buddy and says, "Actually, I have a." There, there's a, uh, a Bass Pro Shop down here. I'll just get better gear. So he went there instead. So he drove all the way down, come to find out his friend was wrong. There wasn't a Bass Pro Shop down there. So he <laughs> looks on his phone and he's like, all right, where do I get camping gear? And it said Walmart, 45 minutes away, the parking lot he was in to start with. So he goes back to Walmart and gets the one sleeping bag that they had. Anyway, so he, so he goes and he gets to the campground. So it's at night. He, don't, he doesn't have a tent, but it's supposed to be nice out. So he's outside the tent. His buddies are in, he's over in his little area, and, uh, and he says, beautiful out, just beautiful. He's able to see the stars, and it's just a gorgeous night. So he, he starts to fall asleep, and uh, and the moon was just was full. And so it got so bright. You know, I know how when you're sleeping, you get in that REM stage where everything's really, really, like, in height, heightened, you know, you, your sound, everything, especially in the woods. Well, he opens his eyes and he said the, the moon was just piercing in his eyes. So he couldn't even get back to sleep because it was so bright. So he moves the sleeping bag up underneath this pavilion that's overhanging over the grass. So he's laying down there and he bundles up. And just as he's getting ready to, to go to sleep, fall out again, the wind just starts barreling through, just starts getting really windy. And where he was laying, that wind in the air was coming right through his sleeping bag and it was making him, it was freezing. It was making him so cold. So, and he waited and waited and it's like finally he goes back to his truck and he grabs clothes, bag of clothes, starts stuffing clothes down his <laughs> sleeping bag because he wants to be outside. He bundles himself up nice and tight and he says, and it just didn't, wasn't working because it was freezing and he was shivering all night. And finally at about 4.30 in the morning, he had enough. He's like, I'm just gonna, I give up. Hadn't slept all night. So he gets out of his sleeping bag, kind of steps back and looks in disgust at his sleeping bag. And then finally he says, wait, how come I didn't just turn the sleeping bag the other direction so the wind was going over me and not in? I could have just done that and been fine and slept all night. Point being, sometimes we got to step out or have someone else to help us step out for us to see that all we need to do is redirect where we're going and repivot so that we can enjoy the experience instead of the experience over control us. You know, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's, that's worth a million dollars. By the way, if you'd like to pay a million dollars for that story right now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Go to but man, yeah. that that's such a great, great analogy, obviously, yes. And even though, even better that it really happens, right? It's not just something you read on, on Reader's Digest somewhere, right? No, it really happened. <laughs> it really happened. And so, I told him I was going to steal the story and tell it, and I've been telling it ever since. <laughs> oh, that's good. I've, I thought about it. I was like, I wonder if the guy said it was okay to tell it. Or yes. What? <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm going to steal it. He goes, go for it. It's me. I was talking about me. <laughs> That's right. I, said, I bought a nicer yeah. tent and I've got a duck. I've got a feather filled sleeping bag and whatever. I don't know. Whatever. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's so good to lose. So, I mean, we've had a great conversation so far. A lot of folks get to be able to, man, they heard some great nuggets about things, whether you're a CEO or somebody at a business. And obviously all the things we've been talking about, um, I think are all life experience stuff. It's things mm -hmm. that, are, that are so important for us to do in our own lives. It is. Um, that really affect the way we do things in our business life, our Agreed. career life, you know? Um, so, I mean, both of you are, are fantastic. And obviously since you've been married since 2005, it's been 15 years and you're still together and smiling together. It's an amazing thing, right? Yeah, so, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. And I don't know if you've ever fed a baby pizza or not, but you know, that's another story, but I will say. I don't recommend it. Don't try it at home. <laughs> so, 
how can how can folks get in touch with you guys and tell us a little bit about uh, you know the business side of things and we can give a chance for folks to connect with you sure yeah absolutely yeah, yeah they can reach out to our our website uh lou everett group.com and they can reach out to us but we're all over social linkedin facebook uh, even Instagram. So we, we have those, uh, to offer to, what do they do? What do they say? Hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag Lou Everett group. <laughs> yep. Or is that the, yep. that the new symbol? Now, whatever <laughs> yeah. It is? yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's all those young people do that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, we, uh, but uh, Lou Everett, www.loueverettgroup.com. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all our information's there. Reach out to us. You can email us. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, um, we've got a couple of big things coming up and I, so I kind of want to give a shout out at the same time here. Is we were we've partnered we we're big on partnering with people and collaborating. I think that this is just it's so important that we all do this to help out other people. Our goal the the to 2020 has been to, to influence and impact at least 10,000 people, and I think we've surpassed that this year. Luckily, with social media and with partnering and with collaboration, and uh, so it's so important if you really truly want to influence and help people, collaborate. So we've we're collaborating with Joe Navarra from the local area. He is a relationship marketing expert. He is fantastic. And we have an event coming up locally, but it's virtual and it's, it's a hybrid event. We're actually going to, we're going to venture out and, and <laughs> safely uh, uh, gather in, in a, like 20 people and, uh, and for a live event on leadership mastery. Mm, nice. We've collaborated with, it's going to be an amazing event. It reminds me of like Tony Robbins events. That's how we're doing this thing. It's <laughs> going to be fantastic. And, um, have you ever seen a Tony Robbins event on the virtual ones that are just fantastic. Um, and it's going to be virtual. So you can sign up for that as well. Um, and you can find out about that on our Facebook page as well. Okay. The whoever group will be on there. Is um, it on your website too? Or just, on yes, okay. it is on the events. It'll yeah, be on the, it's on the I'm event page. Kidding. I'm just thinking uh, since I only live an hour and a half from you guys, I'm like, Hey, you know, I know, right? <laughs> there you go. Come on down. And if you want to come yeah. virtually, either way, it's going to be like, the experience is going to be a, Great, both sides. We're focusing. We have a whole team on that. We have a whole team on the uh, on the ground. So it's going to be it's going to be great. Um, we've got a webinar though coming up shortly, and that, that event actually is on um, November 9th, Okay, at eleven p.m. to two p.m. Eastern. Eleven a.m. <laughs> to two p.m. Eastern. Uh, it thank might you. be eleven p.m. It is in the Philippines. It's twelve hours. Yeah, that's exactly. true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So no yeah. excuses that you can't fly in. You know because. Right. It <laughs> yeah, the virtual. But we also have a live virtual webinar that we're doing, and it, and it's a complimentary for anyone that wants to join us. Um, and that's coming up at the uh, October 29th. Mm -hmm. So we're talking six days from now, yep. something like that. Mm -hmm. And at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern on communication, how to connect, not just communicate. Uh, it's 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 is a phenomenal topic that we teach on a lot about communicating and how connecting and communicating are different. Um, and that's complimentary. Come on in. You can go to webinar.empowerment.training and I'll send you the link to that so that you can throw it out there. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that right away. That's a, what was that? What do you say, honey? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It's yeah. Well, webinar.empowerment.training. Right now as we're speaking, it's magically appearing here on the video. Yeah, Look yeah. at that. It's right there. <laughs> and, so, uh, and we'll, uh, yeah, and, Join, uh, come on in with us. We love, we have a lot of, uh, we give away a lot of door prizes and a lot of it's fun um, and ways for you to continue to grow afterwards as well. So that's what we got a couple of big things going on. Um, mm -hmm. And we'd love to have as many people as we can come check us out. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, obviously if you're watching this now, you've had a chance to meet Sherry and Lou and why wouldn't you want to sign up for it? Cause they're incredible people and they have a lot to offer, especially on a freebie. I mean, come on, that's worth it for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, Lou, and Sherry, I'm so grateful for you. I mean, obviously, you're so incredible because we're both from North Carolina, and North Carolina is the best <laughs> that's right. On Earth, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I am so grateful for for our time together here today on Matt Chat Live. And again, folks, if you want to reach out to them, uh, the website here is uh, is magically appearing with uh, LouEverettGroup.com, right? And uh, we're so, so happy to ha have you here. And of course, if you're watching here on LinkedIn, because this is primarily a LinkedIn show, mm -hmm. then uh, you can meet them as well on their profile page here at LinkedIn. And um, you can just put that in the little search bar up at the top. It's magic how that happens. And pop, there they are. So uh, <laughs> right there. you'll find them, right? So um, yeah. thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for sharing your hearts and sharing some information that's so, so powerful uh, that I believe some people can actually apply in their lives today. 
especially the times that we're living in right now that are a little um, interesting to say the least. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, there's a lot of these tools that people are, are looking for. Some may not ask for it outright, but uh, moments like this that we're airing something where they can just press play can be very, very helpful. So uh, thank you for offering that out today, guys. Of course, anytime. Thank you, Matt, for having us. And yeah, it's uh, always nice to be able to, to share what we do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks again, folks, for being here for another episode of Matt Chat Live. And we will see you again another time for another amazing person or people that come here to share something <laughs> with you to make your life better. Thanks for being here again. And thanks again, guys, for being here today. You're welcome. Bet. Thank you. If you'd like to be a guest on Matt Chat Live and Matt Chat Live Dailies, please reach out to us here or visit us at mattcrump.tv.